Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. We got to talk about Kentucky and Alabama because this was as comprehensive uh, of a performance I think we've seen from Kentucky uh, on both ends of the floor all season long, uh, especially in the first half. I thought in the last 10 minutes of the first half was the best basketball that we've seen out of the Kentucky Wildcats this season, considering the, the opponent and considering how well they played. Justin Edwards had 28 points, 10 for 10 from the floor. Zvonimir Ivasic, 18 points, five boards, four blocks. Antonio Reeves went for 24. DJ Wagner still started, still struggled, but I actually thought he played, uh, struggled shooting the ball, but I actually thought that he played pretty well tonight. Goodman, well, I just I don't even know what to make of Kentucky at this point. They had the win at Auburn, then they go and blow a fifteen point lead at LSU, then they come home and they have this performance tonight. Is this are they just Jekyll and Hyde? Is this just what it's going to be with Kentucky all season long? Because every time I watch them when they play well, I fall a little bit more in love with this program. But that's kind of what we've been saying for months, right? Early on, they came out of the gate so strong, we were like, oh my god, like this team's just going to keep getting better and better and better, and then they started to play like freshmen which was their inconsistency started to show, especially in the defensive end. But even offensively, they weren't humming like they were the first month of the year. Um, I love the fact that Justin Edwards showed up tonight because he's been kind of mm -hmm. like their eighth man most of the year, right? It's almost like the forgotten man. And, and he was, by some people, the highest mm -hmm. rated freshman. I thought he might be their best freshman this year, to be honest. Uh, because of his size, because big, strong, you know, wing that could physically be able to to contribute right away. Um, but tonight, you know, they were they were clicking on all cylinders offensively, and like you said, they weren't as good as they were against Auburn defensively. But again, they held Alabama one of the best. You know what stood out to me, Jeff? Well, you know what stood out to me? We heard Antonio Reeves say this. Um, after the game, when you interviewed him at Auburn, right? And we heard a couple of the guys kind of reference this. I think Cal referenced it a little bit in the post-game press conference there, where they said part of why they had their struggles, it was three straight games at home that they lost. Um, and all three had like insane, like really, really good crowds for Rupp Arena. And they said that they were kind of nervous playing at home. Like, do you think that part of part of this was they kind of got rid of some of those demons. Like they did not look like they – it felt like they exercised something. Does that make sense? Like it, this was not a team Maybe. that looked like yeah. they were shook. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know if they believe that, but I, I feel like here's the thing with John Calipari. He is the master of getting them to believe something. Even if it's not true, he's going to get them to believe it's true. And I think that's what he did with those guys. He got them convinced that on the road, you're loose. You're loose. You're better on the road. And they went out there and what? They beat Auburn in in as hostile environment as there is. He's the ultimate in mind games. And and, and that's where Cal is elite level, right? And, and, and figuring out the bo the buttons to push with each player and overall in the team. And, you know, again, they just had so many weapons tonight. You know, uh, Big Z or Little Z turned back into Big Z. Um, Justin Edwards was as good as anybody in the floor. Reed Shepard was terrific. Reeves was himself. You know, they don't – they haven't needed D.J. Wagner to be great since he came back from the injury. He's kind of moved into that kind of eighth-man role, and he can be – you know what? You know what he can be, Rob? If he can be their best perimeter defender, don't even give us anything offensively. We don't care. We just need you to defend mm -hmm. at the highest level you possibly can, and maybe that gives him a little bit of a chance because ultimately if they don't guard better, even than they did today in stretches – they're not going to go to the final four. Yeah. Randolph, what are your thoughts? I think it's the best offensive performance we've seen this year on the offensive end of the floor and, and not to be discredit them defensively, uh, uh, you know, playing Alabama because they space you so well, they shoot the three and then they drive you. So you can see them making a commitment sometimes where they were like, look, we got to guard the three point line. And then let's just force these guys. And they, they gave up some layups where you were kind of looking like, like, damn, they just olayed them. But they were so worried about the three-pointers. And I think it was a conscious effort. But when they scored 58 in the first half, I'm like, wow. And then they came out and followed that up with a 59 in, in the second half. I mean, it was flat out just a, an impressive performance against a hell of a team. I mean, Alabama's a damn good team. And and Kentucky just handed them their, their tails tonight, a 22-point win at home. But I, I think it's the best offensive performance we've seen for a team 
that has that type of talent. We've never questioned the talent. I think tonight we saw them play as well as they can play on the offensive end of the floor. Uh, there's still things we, you know, you'd like to see from them a little bit more consistent on the defensive end. But it felt as though defensively, schematically, they were just like, look, stay home, just guard your guy one-on-one, -on -one, guard your yard, and try to take away threes and force uh, Alabama in, 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 into one dimension or just scoring in the paint. And, uh, but offensively, wow. I mean, I, I don't know what you say about that. that that's not going to happen again for sure. But well, part of know, it is because Alabama's it defense. Could, it could, RC. It could happen no, again with the dudes on this team. Like the, it could. No, part of it no. is because Alabama guards less than Kentucky does at this point. But like, right. 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 come on, man, it could definitely happen again with with this group. Maybe not Justin Edwards going nuts like this, but they got they got firepower. You know what? No, hey, they can hey, score. Nate Oates, Nate Oates had a quote after the game, and he said, "Hey, listen, uh, I, I'm paraphrasing. We've had we've had people question our defense." Um, you know, all year we erased those qu questions tonight. We don't <laughs> guard worth a shit. That's what he was saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, yeah. man, I thought yeah. I was watching an '80s NBA game. I I, I thought it was yeah. going to be like yeah. 120 to 115 or something like that. I thought it was an old '80s. NBA game. What about a current NBA game? What, what, what do you mean uh, '80s? A current that's NBA true. game. That's true. It looked like the All Star Game, for for being totally honest. I, I do want to did, say, yeah. like, I, I do just want to say real quick, your point on the defense of end, um, giving up ninety five points. Uh, that that's a lot of points, but it was on eighty possessions, and it's against the best offensive team in college basketball. Just to put it into context, they gave up ninety five, and they dropped like two spots in Ken Palm's defensive efficiency numbers. Like this was, uh, all things considered, like a pretty decent defensive performance. And I thought that their game plan was. Actually, pretty sound. And the thing that stood out to me is that it felt like it looked like they actually executed what the game plan was really, really well for the majority of this game, which was basically anytime someone's driving to the basket, if you're in the corners and it's on your side, stunt and recover. Show and get back to your man. Don't give up the three. Give up the layup if you have to. They basically decided that in pick and rolls, they were just going to play two on two and weren't going to help off any of the shooters. And we're going to say, if you're going to beat us on lobs, try to throw it over. Uh, you got on Yesu and, and see if you could figure it out there. And it worked pretty well. And uh, it just, to me, the biggest thing for Kentucky was the execution on that end of the floor. And it seems like in, I would say, probably six and a half of the last eight halves of basketball we've seen from Kentucky, they've been somewhere between good to really damn good on the defensive end of the floor. And I just think that with where that is trending, that's a good sign, which leads me into my next question here. Okay. So if Alabama's going to guard like this, I can't take them seriously as a national title contender right now, right? Auburn, as much as I want to be in because of what their metrics are and how, how they play in that system, I can't fully buy into the guards at this point. I think right now, if you're looking at it, Tennessee is probably the best title contender in this league. They just beat Texas A&M by 35 tonight. Dalton Connect didn't get 25. He only had 24, but he's the best player in that conference. And I would make the argument that they're the best defensive team in that conference. So to me, they're the best title contender. If we're just looking at the last four games from Kentucky, right, and we kind of throw out the, 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 the stuff that went bad in the middle of January, RC, how close is Kentucky? Like, is this actually a team that you think can make a run to a Final Four? Like, is are they in that same conversation as, as Tennessee is? Because the consistency is a worry for me. But, like, every time I see them do this, I'm just like, look at that. Look how good they are. What we know is Tennessee is really good defensively and they're good enough to win games in a tournament. And now they have an offense. So we're if we're betting, we're betting on Tennessee because we've seen it. Kentucky's ceiling is higher, but they also can disappoint you because they don't guard it consistently. They haven't guarded consistently all year. Are they capable of doing that? We saw them execute a game plan tonight. So I think that's the concern. But if you're asking me which team that if I had to pick between the two, that I would bet would make it to Phoenix, I probably would lean more towards Tennessee. But I, I just like the experience. Mm -hmm. Goodman? Yeah, I mean, they got all the pieces. Like, like RC said, they don't have the upside Kentucky does. They're not going to – you know, their A game isn't going to be Kentucky, and it's A game. No. But they're going to play a whole lot more B games than Kentucky's going to play. We've seen it. It's a roller coaster ride uh, for Kentucky, not as much so for, for Tennessee, especially once they got uh, Zakai Ziegler healthy. Uh, and back, you know, he, he was obviously coming back from the injury to start the season, took him a little bit, 
then he hit a little bit of a wall. He, he's, I feel like he's got kind of got his groove back, and obviously they got a dude. Like the beauty of Kentucky is they got a bunch of dudes. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.